Over the last year or so, we've talked about the wow factor, rare items, gold blooms, rare cars, and it hit me today when I was working on the piece that we really don't talk about 90% of the storage auction business. 9% of the storage auction business is not finding some rare and wonderful item. That's not even close to what the average day of a storage auction hound is like. Number one, you wake up. You may pop a few uh, Excedrin or some type of painkiller because your joints hurt from cleaning out the unit the day before. Then you get yourself together and you gather your information and you decide which auction trail that you're going to go on. Then you, based on if you made your phone calls a few days before, you get that stuff together, you climb your ass out of bed, you put on some old clothes because you may be loading that day. You may not be planning on loading that day, but any day could be a load day. So your wardrobe goes to shit because it doesn't make any sense to dress nice to get dirty. None whatsoever. And since you're getting dirty a great deal of the time, you dress like a bum frequently. So you got your bummy clothes on, you're getting in your car, and you're like, oh, okay, I got my money. Because the bank saying it's not open that time of morning, so you can't pull it out the ATM, which you may need. So you need to have it on you. Oh, he's like, oh, yes, I've got my trusty side iron. And then you roll out to the auction. Oh, snap, your first uh, thing on the sheet, everything was canceled. So you have to go to your default auctions, which may be that day or they may be later in the week, depending on how you set, to get, set together your flow sheet. Oh, well. You think a day off? No, it's not a day off. You've got to do some research. You've got something you need to fix. You have something you need to paint. You have something you need to re -sync. Or you have to actually advertise, market, deliver, or you may move up a unit that you're going to move Saturday to the day since now today has become a free day because the auction was canceled. Doesn't sound so glamorous, does it? There's no wow factor. There's no ooh wow. There's no big thing. It's just a lot of freaking work from sun up to sundown. Now, if that didn't scare you off, you might have the stuff in you that would make you a storage auction hound. So stay tuned. Being a storage auction hound is a lifestyle. And one of the reasons that many people are not really uber successful in this endeavor is because it's treated as a hobby, something nice to do. And the interesting thing, right now, storage auctions are a fad. I am amazed at how often I hear a reference to a storage unit, a storage auction, in sitcoms, the newspapers, news. I mean, storage, co storage auctions are like the next hot thing right now. They're everywhere. But things that are a fad usually peter out. But what, back with the lifestyle. If you're going to get in this business, you have to ask yourself a question. Are you super sentimental? Are you a person that can see some of the most god-awful sides of humanity and still remain sane? There are some things I've seen in units that have shook me to my core. Things that I will never share on this channel because it's just too perverse. And you know, I really don't have a fear of saying things that are perverse, but it's just, it's too much. It is just literally too much. What I've learned about human nature has just scarred me for life from storage auction units. I mean, seriously, some of the stuff I've seen and some of the stuff that I've seen has actually enriched my life. But the whole deal is it's a lifestyle. Some of the things that will happen to you if you embrace this lifestyle. You'll stop going to the store because retail pricing is just incredibly expensive based on what you spend every week to get great stuff. You just can't do it. You will stop going to the mall. You won't have to buy toilet paper, nor dishwashing liquid or laundry detergent because you'll get it in great quantities out of units every week. You'll also become really, really, really cheap. I'm sorry, some people say that's thrifty. I'm going to call it what it is. It's cheap. I, Glendon Cameron, was an extraordinarily cheap person until recent, until the last few years. I was just, 
I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't part with the money on certain things because of the great deals that I got out of units. Also, with the lifestyle, it boils right on down, not from what, just what you wear to what you live. If you're living in an apartment, being a star junction house is going to be incredibly hard. It's going to be very difficult. I'm not going to say it's not possible, but it's going to be tricky. So, if you're in a house with a basement, two-car garage, you've got a lot of the makings right there because essentially that's a lot of unused space that you will now find purpose for frequently. One room will become your Amazon room. Another room will become your eBay room and the basement will become an in-house warehouse. Now it even moves to your vehicle. If you have a car, you're going to run into some problems. So you need a truck. Preferably a six-cylinder to eight-cylinder truck with a full-size bed. That way you can haul all types of stuff at any hour of the day. Because one of the things that happens to you when you become when you start to embrace the storage auction lifestyle is you start to see value in things that you thought were junk you'll that you know just uh, that bedroom set that you saw when you were driving down the road that you thought was junk that is now 200 to 400 dollars just sitting on the side of the road waiting for your little grubby fingers to grab it and put it in your truck that lamp that the old dude set out on the corner for the trash man to come that's not an old lamp that's a vintage to antique piece that might get you three to five hundred bucks that he just left sitting out there many of the things that you thought were stupid now become very clear all of those storage facilities that you saw they were building in your town city country wherever you are now it becomes like wow i've got a larger hunting ground I got more places to get more inventory because until you get in this business, you have no idea how ubiquitous storage facilities are. They're everywhere. They're in the city. They're in the countryside. Even when you're on the interstate going from you know to grandmother's house, you're gonna pass some some like out in the middle of nowhere, and they just look like kind of creepy storage facilities. But they're there. They're everywhere. Another part of the lifestyle is your friends change a little bit because your normal friends who have jobs and weekends off are starting to look at you like you're a little strange like let me get this straight you root around in the belongings and personal effects of others isn't that creepy no it's exciting and until these shows came on I had people who thought I was weird in my circles like oh that's what you do now I'm a freaking celebrity I'm like what the hell it's amazing what a little fame a little exposure will do for you but those are some of the things that you need to ask yourself are you able willing and ready to get into this because just like there are some good things you can't you can't get gold sure you can get a nice car sure you can hit a treasure hunting trove but for the most part you will be going to the dump the people at the dump will know you on a first name basis because they will see your ass so often and also if you're a little chubby, you're going to lose weight. <laughs> you're going to lose weight if you're loading. And that is, if you're doing the loading and you don't have someone to do it for you. Because it's constant motion from cleaning out the unit, to sorting it, to putting it in the truck, to taking it off the truck, to looking at it again, to packing it up, to moving it, to selling it. It's a lot of stuff. For some people, this is nirvana. They love it. I've got some folks who've jumped into the business and they took to it like a fish to water. But for those of you with finer sensibilities, for those of you who have not embraced manual labor since you were a teenager, this could be a little challenging for you. Before you jump foot first into the cold, cold waters of storage auctions, you should ask yourself this. Am I able to lose money? Let's just be honest about it. You get in this game, you can lose money. You could spend $50 up to $1,000. My video, the worst unit that I ever bought, I lost $1,000. Down the drain, it went. God, never to be seen again. Could you take that kind of hit? If not, you may want to rethink it. Are you used to being dirty all the time? 
are you used to looking at other people's pornographic paraphernalia that's going to be around your house? Because when you do your first sort, you'll find most of it. Then when you're doing the second sort or you sell something, you open up a dresser drawer. Wow, there's a dildo in there. And it looks like it's been recently used. Ew. And I'll tell you, I tell you, I tell you, if you're not a little twisted in the head, this may not be the business for you. Because you're going to see some stuff, you're going to experience some stuff, and you're going to say some stuff, and you're going to think some stuff that you've never, ever thought about before. So I want you to think about that. Because it's not an endeavor. It's not a part-time thing. It becomes a lifestyle. Until recently, for what? Almost, almost 10 years, I didn't buy any cologne from Macy's, Nordstrom's, Bloomingdale's, whatever, whatever it is. Because I got all my smell good out of storage units. I got 90% of my clothing out of storage units. I didn't go to the malls. I didn't. I mean, it's a, it's just, I'm telling you, it's a weird experience. Me being most normal human beings in the mall. It cracks me up because I'm just looking at the price of stuff. I'm just going, I don't believe I just spent that. But, you know, in the transformation of becoming back. You know, it's kind of like I was away doing a bid <laughs> I'm coming back to society <laughs> damn that's kind of scary but that is what happens when you get into this lifestyle the longer you're in it the more that you will change for some this is cool for some it's a way that you can live off the grid if you are the type of person that doesn't need a lot of social interaction and you know how to hustle you can virtually make a full-time living out of storage units Live on cash and be on the underground economy forever. I actually have a few friends, and that's what they do. They've been off the grid for about 30 years. You Google them, you will find nothing. <laughs> nothing. And I don't know how the hell they did that, but they're kind of hidden. For some people, that's appealing. But you must work to make that happen. So these are some of my thoughts about the storage auction lifestyle and how it will affect every corner of your life and it's really something not to be taken lightly because you know like you will watch the shows and sure it's exciting when someone gets something small and unique and you find out it's worth a lot of money or potentially since you never really see them selling this shit that's exciting but that's not 90 percent of it 90 percent of it is you'll spend 100 bucks on a unit you might make anywhere from 200 to a thousand profit you may spend $1,000 on a unit and make $500 profit. Those are more consistent expectations for you to hold your grubby little hands on in light of all the competition. That's reality. Now, the thing is, to put that in the proper perspective, if you bought 10 units a month and you spent, say, $1,000 and you quadrupled your money, You've got your original buying capital back of a thousand and you made three thousand dollars profit, which is actually a little bit more than what the average person makes. So it depends. But if your mindset is not right, if you are <coughs> had you, had you allergic to hard work, this ain't the business for you. And for everyone that sent me all of your, I'm gonna say well thought out plans on how to automate. You continue to forget there are two points of contact that you must be there to witness. When you buy the unit and when you load the unit and sort the unit. Unless you have a family of trustworthy dwarves or new mutants or aliens to do that for you who have no interest in valuable things or cash, okay, you can automate that. But until you get to that point, you have to put some face time in at those two contact points or you could get ripped off. I was loading up a truck one day and I had some of my Latino friends with me and the guy lifted up a dresser the wrong way and the drawer came out. Fortunately, it landed in a bin because the front would have been totally destroyed and popped out some jewelry, which was in an envelope. Well, not an envelope, a greeting card. It was in a greeting card and all the stuff came careening out and then phew, the gold chain spilled out there and there. Essentially, when I weighed that sucker, it was 15 grams. You do the math. 30 seconds, that could have been gone. So there's a lot about this business that's just not 
for the average person. And that doesn't make you bad. That doesn't make you lazy. That just means it's not for you. So I want you to really, really think about it because I've got a lot of people and they're they're like high on storage auctions. They've been drinking the Kool-Aid and direct injection into the veins. But understand, most people in this country are not rich. Most people who have a unit that goes up for auction, there could be stuff a valuable note in terms of you get it cheap, you can resell it and make money. But this quest that there's going to be a gold to bloom in every unit is nonsense. It's not going to happen. Don't set your expectations on that shit. Or you will be disappointed every day of the week. Now, if you think that you can buy a unit and actually flip what you get in there for a profit, small or large, that's more in line and you can do that. But don't. Don't, don't, don't think you're going to come out here and score the million dollar unit. Granted, some newbie did, and I don't know how many units he bought. So anything's possible, but that's the exception. And that's an atypical event, not the norm. So that's just a few things about the storage auction lifestyle. It's not all bad. It's not all good. It is what it is. And it's something that's going to be with us for a while. Because one of my big fears were that they would change the laws and make it difficult to sell units but actually they have changed the laws and they're easier to sell and with the economy being what it is and I don't care how many shows are on people will continue to do dumb stuff dumb stuff being defined as buying way more shit than you really need in your life and paying money to put it somewhere because you don't have room for it in your house people will continue to lose their units and it will continue to be resale community and it will continue to be a robust and thriving storage auction business community. That's what's going to be. All right, this is Glendon with Making Money with Storage Unit Auctions.